My name is Jack Meggett Phillips, and I am the author of The Beast and the Bethany. It's a children's book about a young 500-year-old, a carnivorous beast, and a child who is going to be eaten. Today, I'm going to show you how you can make your own beastly monsters. But first, here's the opening chapter of The Beast and the Bethany, where something very, very wrong takes place. Chapter one, The Purple Parrot. Ebenezer Tweezer was a terrible man with a wonderful life. And at the time when this story begins, Ebenezer was about to do an especially terrible thing. All Ebenezer did at first was walk into a bird shop. Hello, Mr. Tweezer, said the large, pleasant bird keeper. How could I help? And good day to you, said Ebenezer. I've come to pick up the Wintelorian purple-breasted parrot. Oh, yeah, of course. This is a special one. Remember now, the bird keeper brought out the sleeping bird. Less than 20 of them left in the whole world. You ain't the sort of person to lose it, are you? I won't do that, said Ebenezer. You don't get many of these round no more. It took me a long time to track one down. These sorts of birds, they love an audience. You ain't that sort of person what's going to keep it hidden away, are you? Oh, I wouldn't dream of doing that, said Ebenezer. These sorts of birds, well, they need a lot of care and attention. You ain't gonna treat it bad, are you? Of course not, answered Ebenezer in a high and shaky voice. The bird keeper knew and loved each one of his birds, from the aquatic warblers to the yellow-legged seagulls, and he did not want to see any of them go to a bad home. He took a long Hard stare at Ebenezer. I know exactly what sort of person you are, said the bird keeper, after a second or two of staring. Ebenezer gulped. You're a great bird owner, said the bird keeper. I can see it in your face. Ebenezer smiled with relief and handed over the money. He bid farewell and left with the caged and sleeping parrot. He climbed into his car and started the short drive back to his house. Just as he was parking, the parrot woke up with a large yawn. <coughs> Good morning, said the parrot in a distinctly unparroty voice. He spoke in low, chocolatey tones. Uh, it's late afternoon, said Ebenezer. Whoopsie, whoopsie. Well, go late afternoon. My name is Patrick. And mine is Mr. Tweezer. Welcome to your new home. Woo! Gosh! exclaimed Patrick. Now, the woo and the gosh were both the right sorts of words to say because Ebenezer's house was nothing short of extraordinary. It was 15 stories tall and 12 elephants wide. Patrick was filled with excitement. He was a well-travelled parrot, but he had never seen anything like this. Can I come out of my cage now? He asked. Not yet, answered Ebenezer. There's someone I want you to meet first. Well, um, something is perhaps a better description. Ebenezer got out of the car and took Patrick into the house. This thing, it lives on the top floor, said Ebenezer, and it's very excited to meet you. Ebenezer climbed the stairs, whilst Patrick took in all the beautiful things around him. Try not to be scared, said Ebenezer, once they reached the top floor. It won't like you if you are scared. Ebenezer pushed down the handle of the rickety old door at the top of the stairs. It opened with a creak. He switched on the light. The room was not like the rest of the house at all. It was damp and smelled strongly of boiled cabbage. It was bare, save for a set of red velvet curtains at the end of the room. Ebenezer drew the curtains open and revealed the beast. The beast was a big blob of grey with three black eyes, two black tongues and a large dribbling mouth. After taking a moment to compose himself, Patrick said, Good morning. My name is Patrick. It's late afternoon. The beast's voice was soft and slithery, like a snake made of feathers. I want you to sing. Oh, what would you like me to sing? asked Patrick. Sing a song about me, demanded the beast. Patrick paused a moment. Then he began to sing. The beast 
has the finest house in the land. It's so tall and long and terribly grand. Even the queen with her palace so wide couldn't compete with where the beast resides. Ebenezer was impressed. The tune was pleasing to hear and the lyrics seemed to make the beast happy. The beast has a face so youthful and round with three eyes to make sure lost things are found and two tongues for licking all it can find. The beast is quite clearly a one of a kind. Patrick stopped singing. He said he was sorry that it was such a short song and that he would be able to sing something a little longer once he got to know the beast better. The beast smiled. The smile was wet with dribble. That was beautiful, tell me. Are there many little birdies like you? Oh, gosh, no. There are only 20 of us left in the whole world. Patrick's eyes filled with purple tears. How many beasts like you are there? I'm the only one, the last survivor. The beast smiled as it said this. It's good that you're rare. I like rare things. Come a little closer so that I can see you better, birdie. Ebenezer picked up the cage and brought Patrick closer to the beast's three black blinking eyes. Closer. Ebenezer dragged the cage so that it was three footsteps from the beast. Even closer. Ebenezer brought the cage so that it was right in front of the beast's large, dribbling mouth. The smell of boiled cabbage was now eye-wateringly strong. Can you see me now? asked Patrick, a little nervously. Oh, oh, I could see you fine the whole time, said the beast. It licked its dribbling mouth with its two black tongues. Then, then why did you need me to come closer? Asked Patrick. I am afraid to say that this was the last question that poor Patrick ever asked. Oh, poor Patrick. Well, as you've heard, the beast is pretty dreadful. And I'm sorry to say that there are monsters just like it all over the world. There are minotaurs lurking on the moon. There are invisible tarantulas hidden in every fancy tea shop. There is even a pillow demon in your room right now, watching your every move. Where do these monsters come from? Well, they come from the minds of authors, writers, painters, poets, and any child with a curious imagination. Now, at some point after this video, I want you to use your imagination a pen and a piece of paper to create a beastly monster. Now, in order for you to create a monster, you need to ask yourself just one simple question. What does your monster want? You see, monsters and villains are at their very scariest when they want something. For instance, in The Beast and the Bethany, the beast wants to eat the worst behaved child in the world. In the Avengers superhero films, Thanos wants to destroy half the universe with a single click. Cruella de Vil wants to make a coat from the skins of 101 Dalmatians. The Grinch wants to make sure no one ever celebrates Christmas again. Now, in order for you to find out what your monster wants, you are going to think of the thing you love doing most in the world. Then you're going to come up with a monster who loves ruining whatever you love doing. For instance, if your favorite thing is reading a book snuggled up in bed, then maybe your monster loves ruining the fun by eating your books. If you like going swimming in the sea, then maybe your monster lives under the sand and tries drowning you whenever your parents aren't looking. If you enjoy opening presents, then maybe your monster disguises itself in wrapping paper and yells in your face uh, when you go to open it. Next, you need to think of what your monster looks like, and this should all relate back to what your monster wants. So what would a book-eating monster look like? Would it have claws and jagged teeth so it can tear the pages away faster? Would a sand creature slither and hiss? What about a birthday present destroyer? Would it have lots of arms so it can open all of your presents before you have chance to even get downstairs? Try and think up as much as you can about your monster. Uh, what they look like, what they sound like, uh, where they live. Um, write down some words and sentences to describe them. Now, once you're done, you could even draw a picture of your monster. And of course, 
don't forget to give your monster a name. Well, happy monstering. I'm terrified already. Thank <laughs> you.